there. Perfect. Good morning, everyone. I'm excited that everyone is here for our second session. Um, yesterday went amazingly. Amazingly, that's the word I'm going to use. Um, so I hope you guys get something out of this. I love hearing about it. it. It excites me. So I hope that this is a session that motivates you to do something more. Um, I am Mariah. I'm going to be the moderator for this session. And we are doing the Google certification um, session this morning. And presenting this is going to be Jamie Trujillo. She is an amazing presenter, amazing person. And you're going to learn so much from her. Um, Remember that if you want to, um, if it's too small, you can always double tap on the screen and it'll make it bigger. So her little presentation there, if you double click on it, it'll bring it forward so you can see it a little better. If you have any questions, I will be moderating the chat. So go ahead and put them in there and we'll be answering them as we go or towards the end. So without further ado, Jamie. Thank you so much, Maria. Really appreciate that introduction. Welcome everybody to our Google certification session. Um, as Maria mentioned, I am Jamie Trujillo. Whoops, I went too far forward. Uh, I'm Jamie Trujillo. I'm a senior training consultant for the distance learning support team, uh, previously known as the DELT team, NM DELT team. So if you've heard that name, that's who we are, just under a different name. Um, I love Google. So Google certification was just sort of a natural thing for me to want to do, and I want to be able to share that with you. So before we get started, I just want to see who we have in our group today. And so in your chat, I want you to just type the letter A, B, or C that best describes you. A says, I've looked into certification. I'm ready to get this party started. You're ready to go. Um, B, I've thought about certification and would like to learn more before I decide. Or C, I'm new to this and I'm excited to learn more. So um, Mariah, if you'll just let me know what's coming in the chat, that would be really great. We don't have anybody yet saying anything. Okay, hopefully you can see where the chat is. Um, just so you guys know, it'll say session, which has like a gray bubble around it. There's an event chat and a session chat. You want to be in the session chat. So we have two people who said B. Okay, great. So obviously you've thought about this. Maybe you know or maybe you don't know about it, but you're going to learn more today. So thank you so much for that feedback. So for the session objectives, we are going to first learn what Google certification is. I'm going to explain what that means. Um, I'm going to explain the different levels of Google certification and then review the steps to getting certification. Finally, I'm going to talk about how Nemea can help you get a particular certification. And Mariah and I will also share some reflections about our experiences getting certified. So what is Google certification? It is a professional accreditation that is administered and provided by Google that is designed for educators and classroom teachers who want to demonstrate their own proficiency using G Suite for Education tools. It is also for professionals who want to train others in Google. So if you're like me and you just are absolutely in love with Google and all it has to offer, and you're wanting to train others, there is a certification for that. And it is also for any leader or professional who wishes to create new and innovative projects using Google tools. These are actually the three levels of certification that Google has. So we'll talk about all of those individually. Okay, so the first type of certification is the educator level. And this level is the only one that has two different stages or phases. So educator level one indicates that this teacher, this educator is able to use G Suite for Education in their teaching and use it to enhance student learning and their own teaching practices. So this is your very first step in Google certification is that educator level one level. Then you have educator level two. This just takes that educator certification to the next level. Not only are you proficient in using G Suite for Education tools in your teaching practice, 
but you're integrating it along with a wider range of Google tools and other technologies to transform your teaching practice. So this is the part where you've gotten comfortable starting off and using Google tools, and now you want to take it one step further. So obviously those are stacked. You start with the level one certification, and then you move on to the level two certification. The next type of certification is the Google Certified Trainer certification. So when you think about these nuances, these differences, the educator, of course, this is where you're focusing on how you're using Google in the classroom. And for the Certified Trainer, you are focusing on how you are sharing your knowledge of Google tools with other educators. So the trainer certification shows that you are an expert in delivering one to many professional development. In other words, one trainer and a group of people kind of similar to what we're doing right now. So Google certified trainers train other educators on how to use Google tools and give them support as they uh, refine and change their own teaching practices using Google technology. So um, the, the other upside to having this certified trainer certification is that you are part of a directory of certified trainers that is on the Google website and people can find you to provide Google training. Finally, there's the Google certified innovator training, and this is on yet another level educator, you're looking at the classroom, this, the trainer, you're looking at helping other professionals. The innovator looks at their own either classroom or organization or community and thinks of some kind of a problem or challenge that they need to solve. And so these certified innovators attend a three-day academy that focuses on a transformative project. And then they receive one-on-one -on -one help from a mentor to implement and evaluate that transformative project. So I will get into more detail about that a little bit later, but this is really taking your knowledge of Google into a level where you create and transform not just your own teaching practice, but the teaching practice in the, in the community that you're a part of. So getting certified depends on the level or the type of certification that you want to receive. So I'm going to go through it with you. Um, Mariah, if you want to put this link in the chat, you are welcome to join me. You can click right in your chat. You can click on that link and you can open it up in a new window if you want to. You'll still be able to hear me. Um, but this is just teachercenter.withgoogle.com. This is their um, training and certification center. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to show you how to take the steps to get certified. So this is the teacher center here and I'm going to go to the certification tab right on top. Now you'll see me come to this page quite a few times, but as you scroll down, you'll see that there's your educator level one and educator level two certifications right at the top. So if you hit learn more on the educator level one, you'll see that from left to right, there are three steps. There's get training, get practice, and get certified. The training I'll get into in a second. Uh, the practice is just a PDF and I'll, I'll open this in a little bit. But it's a PDF of some sample questions, so um, you can take a look at that. And then Get Certified is the actual exam. So when you look at this Get Training, and, and really no matter how much you already know about Google, I would recommend the training modules um, because when I got certified, I had been using Google at least for six or seven years in the classroom, and I still felt that I needed to get that training uh, before moving on to the exam. So when you click on get training, of course, uh, I'm going to log in with my NM Delta account here so you can see that I have actually completed it. So as you go through the course, you're going to see as you complete units, you'll see those check marks. But you'll um, see that the, the educator level one requires the fundamentals training. And, and I say requires loosely because you don't actually have to go through the training to take the test, but again, it really does prepare you much more, so I would recommend that. 
So the fundamentals training consists of 13 units. So as I go down here, you can see there are 13 units. Once you finish them all, they will all have check marks. Now these units are formatted very similarly. So I just clicked on the first unit here, unit one, get ready to use technology in the classroom. As you look over here on the left, you will see all the different topics within or lessons within that unit. And they always have an introduction, let you know what you will learn. So these are your um, objectives, if you will. Um, it lets you know what Google products will be introduced and what skills you will need. And then you just hit next here and it will take you into that unit or into that lesson, I apologize. So here you can also on the left toggle between those lessons. But um, when you go to the lesson, it will tell you right there approximately how long it will take you. And the great thing about this training is that you can chunk it out. You can finish a lesson and then come back and do another one. And um, I'll show you in a minute how you can see where you left off on your training. And it might take you a little bit less time. It might take you a little bit more, but this is kind of an average amount of time. So as you go through the lessons, you will have some reading. You will also have some areas to jot down notes. You will be able to see what other educators have written. So here they want you to jot down your ideas and then you'll be able to see what other people said when they jotted down ideas. You'll, you might have a video or two. Sometimes they have multiple videos for you to watch and you might have an assignment. So here, this one is a Google Doc assignment. So if I click on this doc, it's going to open up a new tab for me. It's going to ask me if I want to copy it, which I do. And this is great because it gives you practice using Google tools. I click on the language I want to use and then it will bring up my questions. Now this is just for me. So when I write my answers here, this is saved for me. It helps me keep track of what I'm looking at, especially if I want to move up to the innovator level, you can have those to come back to when you are um, you know, going forward. So this gives you practice using a Google Doc and at the same time, keeping notes. Now what's great is that this will be saved in your Google Drive so you don't have to worry about saving it anywhere else. It'll be right there for you. You do not have to turn it in. This is just for you. So when you're done with it, you just X out of the tab and then you can see what other educators have written just like before. And then you have these lesson checks. So here, You'll go through the question, you'll pick just a random answer, um, or you don't pick a random answer, you actually answer it. I'm just picking a random answer. And then you hit check and it will tell you if you're right or not. So then maybe, okay, I wanna change my answer and now I'm correct. So when you go through these lesson checks, it does allow you to change your answer and check it. And then you see at the bottom, there's always a unit review. So you'll have a unit review at the end. It will tell you what percentage you got right. You can retake it if you want to so that you get that 100% if you uh, want to go for mastery. Um, but that unit review is going to be at the end of every unit. Okay, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to back up here to the fundamentals training again. So again, once you finish all 13 of these units here, then you are ready. You can go back to, let me go back to the certification here. To your get practice, you just click on that and it, like I said, it will pull up that PDF that gives you some sample questions. It will give you an idea of what you're going to look at on the exam. And when you're ready, whoops, I got out of that completely, my apologies. Let me go back over here. So when you're ready to get certified, you either pay for it yourself and you register or you use a voucher. And I'm going to get to this part a little bit later because I have some news about getting a voucher for that. So that is the certified educator level one. So I'm going to go to the other ones just to go over how you get those as well. So the educator level two is very similar. You have your training, you have your practice samples, and you have your certification exam. The exam for the educator level one is $10, just as an FYI. For the level two, it's $25, so it's a bit more expensive. When you go to the get training, 
Now I'm going to show you what it looks like when you haven't started. So I have not done the certification for level two. I'm a level one certified educator. Um, so level two is something that I will be doing next. So here, this tells me over on the right how many lessons I have and approximately how many minutes it will take to finish all three lessons. So that tells me about how long each unit is going to take. And again, that just depends on you. If you come across a lesson that you are very familiar with, it's a Google tool that you've used quite frequently, you can breeze through it. You don't have to go through each lesson in detail, but I would still recommend going through everything and reading through everything just in case there's something new that maybe you didn't know before or something you may have missed in the past or a change that they've made because Google is always changing and improving and innovating. So the level two training has 11 different units. So once you're done with those 11 units, once again, you go back to Here's your level two. You look at that PDF that gives you those sample exam questions. And I did it again, my apologies. Let me go back to certification. And then you can get certified. You can register for the exam. So for educator level one and level two, with the exam, the exam takes anywhere between two and three hours, no matter which level you take. It is proctored by a company called ProctorU. So you do have to have a webcam. You do have to take the entire exam in one sitting. You can't start it and come back to it. And once you submit your scores, then they will give you your results. But it is that kind of one-shot process. You do have to give yourself enough time to do that. Um, it's not like, say, the tape where you can do kind of one chunk at a time and then come back. No, you do have to take it all at once. And um, like it says, there are no pauses. Now, once you uh, register for the exam, you do have to wait for them to get it ready and then let you know that it's ready before you can actually schedule it and take it. Um, so just be prepared for that, that it won't be something that you can take right then and there. You will have to wait about a day before they tell you that it's ready. So that's the educator levels. Now we're gonna go over to the training levels. So the certified trainer program is different from the educator in that it's not just, okay, you're gonna do a training and then you're going to take a test and you become certified. This is an actual program that you have to apply for and go through. So if we go down here to how can I join, this shows your membership application steps. There is a trainer course that you have to complete. There's also a trainer skills assessment. And, and this is very important, you do have to be certified at both the level one and level two levels. So in order to become a trainer, you have to get those first two certifications. You will film a trainer video and submit an application and a case study. So this is really involved. It does take quite a bit of time to apply and do all the steps to become a certified trainer. Now, once you become a trainer, your steps aren't done. You still have ongoing requirements. So as a certified trainer, you do have to conduct and report at least 12 training or coaching sessions a year. So that obviously rounds out to about one a month. That averages to one a month. You do have to do that and you do have to share your ideas and resources with other trainers and you do have to resubmit an annual product update assessment. So it's like continuing education that you have to keep up this certification. Now one thing I'm not sure of is how long this certification lasts. I'm not sure if as long as you're doing your ongoing requirements that you keep your certification uh, because your educator level one and level two, they're good for three years. So I don't know if you have to renew this after three years as well or if it's you know continuous as long as you maintain your educator certifications. Um, but this one, again, you know, is just really a lot more involved. So this is definitely something you would only want to consider if you want to provide ongoing training, not just 
you know, random trainings, maybe once a quarter, they have to be done regularly. Um, but again, you are listed in a directory of certified trainers, which makes you marketable. So if you love training, I do, I love to train, um, you know, this might be something that you want to look into because it does, it's definitely something that you can add to your list of skills and, and your resume. So that is the certified trainer. And finally, there's the certified innovator. Now, unlike the, you know, with, with the trainer, you do have to have the level one and level two. For the innovator, you don't have to also have the trainer certification. It's not if you think about it, it's not like it's the highest level of certification. It's just almost to the right or to the left of the trainer. So you, if you're not interested in training in Google, you can instead, or in addition to being a trainer, you can also be an innovator. So it's up to you if you want to um, pursue one or both of those. So the innovator program, if we go down here, has several application steps as well, but they're very different from the trainer. So on the Google website, there's a list of these academies. I do not believe they have any live academies right now. They did have a virtual academy in the in the summer, um, and it was their first virtual academy. Normally these academies are in person, um, and, and they try to help you get one that's in a region that's close to you. So they have multiple a year, uh, but this year was, was kind of an anomaly due to COVID. But um, you will find the three-day academy that you want to attend. You will have to take the advanced training course and pass Google Certified Educator Level 2. So you don't have to have proof that you've done Level 1. Um, you do have to have proof that you've done Level 2 of the educator certification. And then you have to have a challenge. You have to identify a challenge that you want to try to solve and you have to film a 90 second video about that challenge and why you want to solve it. You do have to interview some students or teachers affected by the challenge. Um, so you have to create a video application of that and then you, you fill out the application to apply for that Innovation Academy. Once you get approved, then you can register for the Innovation Academy and attend that. When you attend the Innovation Academy, you are given support from a group of other innovators. You get to talk about what you're doing, fine tune your idea, your transformative idea. And then once you return from your Innovation Academy, you are paired with a one-on-one -on -one mentor for, I believe it's a year, to work on that challenge, to uh, try out your transformative project and evaluate it. So this is a really great opportunity to use Google to really improve what is going on in your area. So um, those are the four levels of certification. So I'm going to go back over here to my presentation and I just want to talk to you and I'm going to I'm going to have Mariah chime in here in a little bit as well. I want to talk to you all about some reflections that I had going through the level one certification. So right now that is the only certification I have is the educator level one. And one thing when I went through the training, I noticed that the unit reviews and the lesson check the check-ins or checklists had a lot of questions that were multiple answer. So it would be like a checklist question in Google Forms where you check all that apply. And I would sometimes find that my answer was incorrect, but I didn't know if it was because I had checked one that was wrong or I hadn't checked one that was right. I didn't know how many needed to be checked. And that was really frustrating to me. That was um, something that uh, sometimes the, the question didn't even really make sense to me as to how those were the right options. So I was really worried when it came time to take the exam. I was really worried that I was going to end up in that situation where I wasn't going to have the right ones checked or maybe I had some of the wrong ones checked um, and that caused a lot of anxiety. But when I took the exam, uh, which is in two parts by the way, and I'll talk about that again in a little bit. Um, when I took the exam and I took that multiple choice part, it told me check the two that are 
correct or check the four that apply. It tells you how many should be checked. So that was that was really good. That was, you know, a breath of fresh air for me. Um, now, going back to the exam really quickly, the exam itself has two parts. So you have a multiple choice part. And once you finish the multiple choice part, then there's a more hands-on part. When you schedule the exam, they give you a mock account that has email, Google Drive, all of that, all your Google tools. The email account has some emails in it. The Google Drive folder has different files in it. You have Google Classroom. And so they give you these scenarios and you have to go through the steps and fulfill all the different tasks that they give you in that scenario, whether it's send an email to this person about this, um, create a Google Classroom and title it this, create this assignment, put it in Classroom, um, put this file from Drive over here, move it over here. So you have to follow all those steps. And that is what takes the majority of the time on the exam. That could take you up to two hours just for that part. So. Um, I, I found that to be nice and challenging. I enjoyed that part um, a lot more than the part one. But you do have to make sure that you look at those steps and you follow all of those steps, which to me is where the training helped me the most, is making sure that I knew how to do all of those things. So um, that was one reflection I had. The other reflection I had, and this is just more of like a technical issue, was that when I went to submit my test, it said, okay, hit submit. Do not refresh your page. Do not X out of this screen because we want to make sure that this is submitted. So I hit submit and I waited for about 20 or 30 minutes with that little you know, rotating circle that said submitting, 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 and it just would not go to the next page, to the confirmation page. And finally it froze. It completely froze and I had to X out of it. And I was really worried for a while that my scores weren't submitted because I didn't get an email confirmation. I didn't get any of that. And then about two days later, I got the email saying that my scores were in, and so I was really relieved that the, that the scores had been submitted, but I didn't have any way of knowing until I got my scores. So that was really stressful too. Um, the other reflection that I have is that when I got my scores, I was told, congratulations, you passed the test, you got your certification. And I was very excited about that, but I got no feedback about my exam whatsoever. I had no idea how many I answered correctly, um, and I didn't get any feedback about what areas I did well in and what areas I did poorly in. And for me, the most helpful feedback would have been to tell me, these are areas where you might still want to study or improve. And so I wish that I would have gotten that feedback, but I didn't. Um, but with all of that said, the training was incredibly informative. And so even if you have no interest in getting certifications and you have severe test anxiety and you don't want to take the exam, the training itself is helpful. You can take that training without having to take the exam. And so I would recommend taking that training anyway. It gives you so much more information about Google. I learned about tools that I had never heard of before. I learned how to use other Google tools in different ways, like Google Maps, for example, for lessons. So it's, it's as an educator, it's a really, really helpful tool. And I'm very grateful that I went through that training because it really did teach me more about Google. So um, those are my reflections and I wanted to invite Mariah to share yours. Thank you, Jamie. Mm -hmm. um, for myself, a big thing was I really enjoyed the training. Like Jamie said, there's a lot of different tools that you can use and different things that you learned that you didn't realize you had with the D Suite account. Um, so for me, I know I spent quite a bit of time on the training simply because I found myself going down rabbit holes and following different trails, just exploring things. So it was a lot of time put in, but it helped me understand Google as a whole, and I loved it. 
Um, as far as taking the test, I think the biggest thing for me is I don't like a lot of lighting. And so when I took the test, um, I had, I was in a pretty dark room, not too dark. I only had a lamp on, but because it is proctored, anytime that it doesn't recognize your face or it sees some sort of shift, it would kick me out because it, it needs to make sure that it sees your face directly and it knows that you are actually taking it and not somebody else. So I think I was kicked out about seven times or so. And so for me, it took really, um, it took a longer time for me to get through it simply because I was having to log back in after I would be kicked out. And that was really, really frustrating to me. Um, like, Jamie, I do have a little bit of test anxiety. So for me, it was really frustrated, frustrating. And towards the end, I just wanted to give up. But I, I realized that as it happened often, I realized that if I would lean in or lean out from my lighting, that's when it would kind of hesitate or kick me, excuse me, kick me out. So I think that was it. Other Overall, it was one of the best experiences that I've ever had. Um, I'm very glad I did it. I know I'm working on the second one and it's it's been a really good thing for me. And I feel, I feel for our program, it has really helped. Thank you so much, Maria. Yeah, th that's, you know, I think something that it's just very important to, to remember is um, because this is being proctored and they have to be able to see your face, just make sure that you are able to be seen the whole time because the test in and of itself is frustrating and kind of, you know, scary without having to worry about those technical glitches. So, um, you know, try everything you can to make sure that those don't happen. And sometimes they're unavoidable, but, um, you know, at least if you know this ahead of time, it's, it's good. So um, the last thing I wanted to talk about was how NEMEA can help you to get certified. So when I told the board about this certification, they somebody had said, well, can NEMEA pay for that first exam? And we voted on it and we said, yes, NEMEA can pay. So NEMEA will be able to pay for your level one educator certification exam fee, which is that $10 fee. All you have to do is complete that fundamentals training course and then show proof that you completed it. You can email proof to either Terry Wimborn, who is the president of NEMEA at twimborn at gmail.com, or to me, I'm the president-elect, so I'm at jamie at nmdelt.org. Either one of us, once we get that proof, we'll be able to email you a voucher code from ProctorU to take that exam. So I'm going to escape out of here really quickly to show you how to do that. So when you want to prove that you've finished the fundamentals course and you want to send us that proof, what you do is you go over to, let's see here, here's my fundamentals training. On each training, there's a progress area here on the left. So when I click on that, it is going to show how many units I've completed. And so it shows the estimated hours of training, the units completed, and then I have the certification, so that shows one. Once you, uh, if you've only done the training, it'll show zero. But there's a print button right here. So if you click print, all you have to do is save it as a PDF, and then save the file, and attach it to the email. And that will show us that you have all those units completed, which is really great. So let me go back to the actual exam. Once we give you a voucher, you're going to come here to this button using a voucher, register here, and it's going to take you to one of these two options. We are going to get you a ProctorU voucher. So you will choose the ProctorU platform and then you sign up and accept with a new user account. You create your account, you put in your voucher. You can see here it already knows that you're taking the educator level one. So once you do that, you'll be able to schedule your exam and take it. So I'm going to go back to my present screen. So if you are thinking about getting this certification, it's just something that I highly, highly recommend. Um, there's really no uh, 
risk in that because we're paying the exam fee. It's just your time, you know. So if you're willing to put in the time to do the the training, it took me a weekend. I spent a good chunk of one weekend, Saturday and Sunday, doing the training. Um, you can spread it out if you need to. You can do one unit at a time. Um, you know, do that. It, it's it will definitely help you to grow as an educator uh, for sure. So I will open it up to questions here in a minute, um, but I did want to remind everybody, if you didn't know, that we have a Facebook workplace page on my.workplace.com, and it is formatted just like Facebook. It's through Facebook, um, but it is for professionals. It's a way for you to share ideas and ask questions of other instructors. If you have an NMDELT account, an email account, you can already get into my workplace. So again, it's my.workplace.com. Just log in with your NMDELT account and you will be able to join the teachers group. Um, if you do not have an NMDELT account, go to www.nmdelt.org, hit the request an email button, and it's just a simple Google form. It's absolutely free and we can get that for you. Having an NMDELT account is very beneficial because it gives you access to state purchase licenses that were purchased for the whole field in the state, such as Nearpod and Screencast-O-Matic. It also gives you access to our teachers listserv. And this is really important because the distance learning support team provides free webinars multiple times a month. And I will send emails announcing these webinars to that listserv. So you will have access to all of those trainings. So if you don't have an NMDELT account, please make one. Um, it's just really, really beneficial to all instructors. Also, if you have not completed the professional development survey that Tina sent out, um, she sent that out a couple of times. Um, it is a little bit of a long survey. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. But what it does is it gives us, with the distance learning support team, it gives us very useful information on what your needs are, what your interests are, so that we can provide training that you want and you need. So please take the time to fill out that survey. And finally, the Motivational Coaching for Adult Education course is starting on Monday. So if you haven't registered for that, if you're still thinking about it, registrations are being accepted through today. So you can go to the Google site listed below and you can register for that coaching course. Finally, and Mariah will put this link in the chat, if you can please fill out the session evaluation, we would really appreciate it. It gives us very useful information to improve our trainings and to just know how you feel about the um, professional development that we are providing. So please fill out that survey for every session. Uh, you may have a tiny URL link also that you were given. Um, you will get the same link every time. So um, if you jot it down one time, you can use that same link to fill out the survey for every session you attend. It's a very short survey, but it's very helpful to us. So I want to has any questions, I will definitely open it up now. Or if you have any questions that you think of later on, please feel free to email me at jamie at nmdelt.org and I will be happy to answer your questions. So at this point, um, if there are any questions in the chat, Mariah? Yes, there was um, a really good question. I really like this question. It is, what is the reason for Google certification? Wow. Okay. So, you know, that reason can be different for everyone. Um, for me, the reason why I wanted to get certified is because I am a distance learning support team trainer. And so this certification gave me the tools to help provide better and more comprehensive training to the field. Um, as an educator, Google certification will give you the tools to better and more efficiently utilize Google in your classes, especially now when most things are remote or digital. Google has just a ridiculous amount of free tools for you. And I know that we're all being inundated right now. I know we are. But Google is free. Google is something that everyone is familiar with. And so if you can integrate Google into your classroom and you can do it well, 
then you can serve your students much more efficiently and keep them. You can retain them. And so for, for me as an educator, I would want to use Google certification as a way to better serve my students. Were there any other questions, Mariah? No, that was it. Monica asked for your email address, but it is there up on the screen. Yes, um, definitely. Other than that, I think that that is it. Perfect. And it looks like it is 8.55, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Thank you all so very much for attending. I appreciate you being here. And I will see you guys back at the stage and for more sessions later. Thank you, Mariah. You're welcome. We'll see you all at the stage. Bye-bye.